all right hello there anyone watching this video so today I'm going to be showcasing a piece of code while also explaining the code start to finish um and this code is a pandemic simulator the code simulates an interconnected population um, and the spread of hemorrhagic uh, I don't know if I pronounce that, I definitely did not pronounce that correctly, but smallpox basically, right? And um, essentially we create a interconnected population and the population we have an inner we have an interconnected population, right? And in the interconnected population, we have people. And we have a class people. We have a class mixing groups. So people go inside of mixing groups. We have a list of people, right, in each mixing group. People have the data status, which would be negative positive, exposed, uh, well, I guess it's exposed, infected, empathetic, and dead. This isn't a list, this is, I just have it as it. And then status clock, because we need this for um, changing what the person's status is over time. This uh, starts at zero, starts to get incremented. When person is exposed, etc. And then uh, we also have age and ID. Mixing groups have a list of people. They have their group ID. And then they also have that's it. Group ID and list of uh, people pointers. So inside of main, we have a list of mixing groups. And remember, in each mixing group is a list of people. And we also have a separate group of people, master list. We create this in main, and we have access to this in main, so that everything we do doesn't just have to be through the mixing groups. So, um, that is right here, a little bit of info for the data structuring of this program. So, we go back to the program, ignoring that kind of cringe uh, wallpaper. I think it is cool though. So, we go back to the program, and they kind of show how it works. So. First, we'll start off at the base level of simplicity. We'll go to the person class. We create a person class, right? And it just has an ID, a status, a status clock, an age, and the group, uh, a list of integers of the group ID. That way we can access um, what groups are in in main uh, to do stuff with later on. So we just set status and status clock to zero. So negative is what zero is right here. See zero is negative, one is exposed, two is infected, three is symptomatic, and four is dead. So set the status clock to zero and the status to zero. And the other stuff we set in main. Um, so the functions we have here for person, um, if we take a look, we have add group. This just pushes to the list of group IDs, the group ID, whenever we put them in a group. Then we have get group size which just returns how many groups they're in. Um, right here, it just gets you know the size of the list, returns it to the main. We get group one, which just gets the um, one of the groups the person's in, and get group two gets the other one, and returns it to main. So that's it for the person class. If we go to the mixing group class, we'll start off with the header file. You can see the data is a group ID and a person list. So we have the functions 
get group ID and set, obviously, the class. Then we have the function add person and clean up. I don't really use clean up, but I have it here in case something goes wrong and I need to implement it later on. Um, I tweak this program. But add person essentially um, pushes to the list the person pointer that's passed into it, or the current person pointer when it's called in main. It just adds it to this list. And we have this right here. This basically is the exposed counter. This is used later on for statistical reasons. Same with these. Um, they essentially just count the amount of people that are exposed, infected, symptomatic, or dead. And we have transmission day. I'll go over this in the, in the uh, CPP. Probability, I'll go over that in the CPP. And start infect clock, I'll go over that in the CPP in a moment here. But we also have here, infect group. This is what starts it all, and this is probably, if I am going to tweak something in this program, the thing I'm gonna tweak later on. So essentially, this is how we start the entire process of spreading through the interconnected population. Um, we infect an entire group, set them to infected, and then it starts to spread. But I think later on I'm gonna change this to randomly exposing, infecting, and whatever in people. So it's not just an entire group of people become infected. But um, this is the display function. It outputs a mixing group, the group IDs, the people in the group, and then it also outputs, or it starts the person list. While the person list is not at the end, it displays. And this is a person list that is inside of a specific mixing group. So for this to display everything, including all the people and all the mixing groups, we need to go to main, and use our master mixing group um, thing that we have, which I also didn't say this. So, no, I did. So we have a list of mixing groups and we have to use this and iterate through each mixing group displaying the function, you know, display. And then it would show all the people in each group you know, that makes sense. So, I'm going to go ahead and go over these now. So, we have the counters up here. As you can see, it just sets a counter to zero. Goes through the list if their status is the respected thing it's counting. Uh, plus plus, we return it. That's it for these. So, for the start infect clock, I basically have this run at each iteration, right? And this goes through a the entire um, mixing group and it looks for um, it basically looks if someone is exposed infected or symptomatic and if they are we just plus one to their clock which should be zero if they just got you know whatever and if they're not then their thing will be stored <coughs> in their specific data so that's how that works and then we have this right here transmission day this one's pretty cool so basically the way I did it I'm sure it could be done uh, in an easier way but this way I did it I have counters here and then a default random engine right so I go through the list of people and I count how many of whatever data is in there and essentially if there is anyone in the group who is infected exposed or symptomatic um, we go ahead and we start this. If no one is infected, exposed, or symptomatic, it, this just never happens, and that's it for that mixing group. It just you know counts up the stuff in there, zero, 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 and then it just goes to the next one. So basically, this all starts if there is anyone in the group that is you know infected, symptomatic, etc. So right here we start a loop that goes through the, the people in the mixing group. And this right here is if their status isn't equal to dead, if their status isn't equal to symptomatic, if their status isn't equal to infected, and if their status is not equal to exposed, we go ahead and set them to exposed. So anyone that wasn't already one of these becomes exposed if there's anyone in the group that has, has this. So this right here um, is a status clock starts to become a, a thing. So after one day, if someone's exposed, but they're not infected, they go back to negative and their clock goes back to zero. If someone's infected, 
that's it for that person. They eventually die because this uh, this disease that this is based on has a 100% uh, fatality rate. So basically, after six days or make yeah, after five days, person who's infected becomes symptomatic and starts showing signs, and then we set them to symptomatic. So if someone is symptomatic or infected after nine days they die and then we just set status clock to null just to save um some data and we keep the other stuff for statistical reasons like the age and stuff but um that's it for that we iterate through the next ones and then that's how that works so this is probability person this returns a double to main so we have a default random engine and the distribution is between 0 and 1 because we end up getting a double and we need to do some statistics here. So I'm going to go ahead and explain some of the math in this Google Docs. So this is for one mixing group. Okay. So as you can see here, mixing group math and fact chance. Let's put this stuff a little closer. So. Basically, the formula is 1 minus 1 minus x to the power of a number. So, x equals whatever. We'll just put should be capital, I guess. x equals constant based on. On this based on the, the things in the group so I'll go over that in a second number equals amount of affected symptomatic exposed people in a group so this X basically is provided to us from a document it's a peer-reviewed document on this um, spread of this virus this entire program is based on that so we essentially have grammarly abusing me right now, but so in a family group that has a kid that's exposed, the constant is 0 0.03. And a family group with no kids, it's 0 0.01. So that means it spreads a bit, um, a bit less. And then in a, a school, an elementary school, it's, I believe it's 0 0.01. High school, eh, we'll just say it's middle school through college. It's 0 0.008, I believe. So. That's some of the constants, right? And we go ahead and we plug that right here. And then we get the number of people in the group. We compute this. And then we return this to main. So if a person is in multiple groups, we have to do this multiple times and multiply them by each other. So that's the math of that. That's how that works. But this is how the function works. So. First, I have some counters, right? Kid infected amount. This includes exposed, symptomatic, or infected. Then we have just regular counters for anyone that's exposed, symptomatic, infected, or dead. So we just count through, get this data. And this is where it's different right here. So if, it, if it's a person who is infected and they're under 18, then we increment the kid infected amount. If it's someone who's exposed under 18, we increment it. And if it's someone who is the other one under 18, we increment it. I should probably put these all inside of this same loop. And, uh, because it's all the same thing. And I, I probably will do that once I'm done with this video. But, um, yeah. So we increment the kid infected counter. And we have this information now to use for our math down here. We get the total members just by adding them all together, even though we don't really need to do that. 
because uh, we have it. But I think this too, because cool, this is actually something I haven't looked at yet. So we don't even really use total. We don't really need increment this here. So we'll just get rid of that. Okay, so we get the exposed, symptomatic, and infected amount, and we add them all up, and then we put them in the total members variable. So now, if the group ID, because this mixing group CPP has class to the group ID, is less than eight, we set the infection constant to 0 0.01. So essentially, this means that if it's an elementary school, because the first eight groups I create in main are elementary schools. That means that this, their rate is 0 0.01. If it's between eight and 16, that means that it's a middle, high school, or college. So I set it to their respected rate. And if it's over 16, that means it's a family group. And if there's no kids, we make it 0 0.01. If it's over 16 and there's kids, we make it equal to 0 0.03. So we essentially take that, that information, and we take chance, which is right now set to nothing, and we set that equal to one minus infection constant. So that is the first part of this right here, one minus x. So we take that, and this pow is just a power function from a library, um, cmath, I believe it is, either cmath or math.h. I have included in the header file, I believe. Yes. So we basically take this chance and we square it to the power of total members which is the infected symptomatic or exposed amount same as we are right here the power of the number of things so this basically gets us a decimal that should be you know depending on how many people in there I'd say at the very most about a 20% chance of an exposed person becoming infected that's if like there's a ton of symptomatic people in the group but Still, you know, kind of high chance. So we return that, and it, it's going to be a very low chance, like 1% chance, if there's like no one infected in the group, or it's like not a group that has kids. So that's how that's all the functions in the .cpp file. So we've gone over the person, mixing group, and but we haven't gone over main. So this is going to make a lot more sense with this main. So pay very close connection, or very close attention right here, because this is how they're all connected. So, in main, we include fstream, cmath, mixing group.h. Just remember here, we don't need to include person.h because mixing group.h includes person.h. This basically has access to the person thing, the person class, but the person class does not have access to the mixing group. But the person class does have access the group IDs that they are in because we pushed it back to in main, which I'm going to show you now. So basically over here, <clears throat> we have some uniform in, uh, in distributions here. So basically this one is used to generate the amount of families in each family group. So this is some of the logic for how we create families. First, we have to create the, the people, right? So essentially when creating creating the interconnected population. So first, <clears throat> I create a pointer to new groups. So we have a list of mixing groups called all mixing groups in main. So we also have these right here. Um, these are placeholders that are going to be used for some of this info. And then a person ID that's set to one, family ID set to 17. So we create the same thing with people, person list. So I ask the user how many people they want to create, what size population. We take that in. And before anything, we create our first 16 groups. So this creates our first 16 mixing groups and adds them to our list. So new group equals new mixing group I. We set the group ID to I. And then, actually, I should delete because I actually had some other stuff in here previously. 
So there we go. That's a bit better. Um, I had some if statements or some an old way I thought I could do it. So we create a new mixing group, set the group ID. We push it back to our all mixing groups list up here. And then we do it for 16 and that's it. So that creates our first 16 mixing groups and the rest are going to be created depending on some other stuff. So while the personal size is less than the size that we want it to be, we start this loop. So basically first we create a new mixing group called and it's family ID. Family ID starts at 17. We already have the first 16. So it starts at 17. We set the group ID to family ID. And then we get the first adult age in the group. The way I did this is I create an adult in a family group and then I spin a dice zero through six. And then basically, depending on what that dice lands on is how many extra people get added to that family. And then we just put random ages on that. But each family group has at least one adult because we make the adult first. So we have an adult and we get the random age, which can be 18 to 76. And then we get the family size, which can be zero to six. We create a new person, put the person ID in, starts at one. And then we set the age to a, you know, the randomly generated age over 18. And then we do new person add group. Just remember the new person, um, or is it new person add group? This comes from the person file. So add group is right here and it just puts the group ID in this list so later on the person has access to it we put the new person in our list our master list up here um, right here to our master list and we go ahead and we set their ID and right, we already did that um, yeah so we set all this stuff and we put them in the, the master list so now we call the add person function which adds a new person to this list Wait, add person. This adds the person to this list right here inside of the mixing group class. And we just set new person to null. And then we iterate the new person ID because now we've created a person. We go into the next one. And then we do a for statement for whatever the family size ended up being. If it's zero, it just skips this, does it, makes a new person, new family group. So we do the basically the same thing as far as setting the data, except for. Now we have schools. The first 16 mixing groups we made, um, zero, 1 through 8 was elementary schools, 8 through 12, or 9 through 12 is middle schools. I think it's 12 through 14 are high schools, 15 to college, and one is, or 16 is a hospital. So basically if they're between these ages when they're created in here, we add them to a random elementary school. I just have it 0 through 8 so I don't have to do anything extra, it's just okay. These are the random ID of the school it's going to be added to. And then if they're between these ages, middle schools, if they're between these ages, high schools. And then I have it a one, uh, a one slash two dice, right? So a 50-50 chance between these ages, they go to college or they don't. And then hospital is just a one in four chance, or no, it's a one in 26 chance of being added to a hospital randomly. And then we just, you know, push back the entire group to the all mixing groups list because now the entire group's done. And then we go to the next family ID, which starts this again and creates all the people we need. So this is a pretty big piece of information here. Feel free to take your time to understand this. Um, I am doing my very best to explain it in a way that makes sense. I'm going to scroll through it slow. As this creates our entire interconnected population here all people set to negative if i put in 500 we'd have 500 people on respected mixing groups here that are all negative so that this is done we ask which group we want to infect we just put in a number then we go ahead and find that group call the function infect group then we just show that we've infected them so if you remember void infect group just basically goes through the list that we've selected sets everyone to two so then we just display it. And now this is how it spreads. So I just have a day variable that's set to one that increments in each iteration of this loop. But we start the loop. While this is <coughs> not equal to x, just something random. And then we have this basically show a day. So 
the switch that only has this as an option, basically. <clears throat> so, basically, <clears throat> these are variables that we use down here multiple times. Um, same with these. Um, so, you basically start with the person list and while the person list is not at the very end of the list, we test some stuff here. If someone in the list is exposed, we go ahead and we get their very first group because everyone is in at least one group. And then we find the group amount. So if the group amount is one, we just do this right here, right? We go ahead and we start going to the mixing groups and we find the group that he is in, which matches this group ID. We put the probability person, which returns that double, if you guys remember. Um, probability person, let's, let's take a look at it. It returns this double, remember? The chance, the like 0 0.9 or 0 0.8, 0 point, you know, 97, whatever. And so now that we have that value in math G1, I want the loop to break because I don't want to just go through all the, the lists and waste time. I want the loop to break, so we break this loop. And then we come down here and we get a 0 through 1 random distribution. And basically, this, ran this random distribution is how we see if they become infected. If the value of this random distribution is greater than this chance, we set them to um, infected. So they go from exposed to infected. So, for instance, say we get from the return value for this 0 0.94 and from val we get 0 0.1 you know just some random number they don't become infected because based on this they have a 0 0.06 percent well it's just a six percent chance of becoming infected and this is clearly not greater than this so this would just not happen but if it is say we get somehow 0 0.98 or something oh they do become infected so we just set them to infect so if there's more than one group they're in we do the same thing except for we get both of the groups and instead of doing a character to break the loop we just have break loop and we have it equal to zero and we increment it each you know time that one of these gets done so once it hits two it means both are done and we break it so we don't waste time we get a chance we multiply them by each other because if they're in multiple groups we basically would end up with two of these to the power of the number so we would multiply them by each other. So it'd be like 0 0.96. I'd say the other one is like ton of infected people. We'd get that. And this would equal like... This. So a pretty good chance of becoming infected, right? So, and it does the same thing here. And then we get back down here. And we iterate to the next person. So that's how that works. And then this down here just goes through all the groups and it starts a transmission day, which transmission day, if you guys remember, we will come back here. I mean, to make it so transmission day is in TP. And it basically is all of this stuff. If you remember, oh, if there's someone in the group positive, their the group becomes exposed. If there's someone exposed but they're not infected after two days, they're back to negative. If there's someone infected after five days, they're symptomatic. If there's someone symptomatic or infected after ten days, they're dead. That's all this stuff. So we call all of those and we start the infect clock. If you remember the infect clock, it's right here. We go through the person list of a group and we set their clock to this, you know, if they're um, infected, exposed, or symptomatic. And a lot of this stuff could be also done in main. The thing is, this is a very uh, complex piece of interconnected data. So I could easily do exactly what I'm doing here in the mixing groups just by using maybe some if statements back in main with the specific person. But I just think 
it's a bit easier and a bit cleaner to just go through each mixing group and do it that way. Um, even though it probably would be easier. Well, no, I guess you'd have to do it in the mixing group because, yeah, you would definitely have to do the um, transmission day in the mixing group. But for the infect clock, I'm pretty sure there'd be a way to do that in the main. Uh, there definitely would be. But I just like to have it um, tidy, both in just little functions. You call them in a little loop in main, and you're done with it. But after that, we basically have all of the logic for like the data done. We display all the mixing groups. This, I think I'm going to change this to basically just display all the people. But I do like seeing the interconnected population and like where multiple people are in groups. But you don't need this at all because we have the counters, if you remember. You basically count the amount of each person, each type of person, and each group. So if we just put that, throw it in a loop right here, go through all the mixing groups, all the function, add it to the counter, which are all set to zero. Um, then essentially, we get, I don't even need this, because take a look right here at this. So we go ahead and we plug this into the counter and we get our data. We just see out it. We increment a day, each iteration of the loop. And that's it. That's it for the program. So to kind of summarize, we have an interconnected population of people that all start off negative. They have age ID, a list of group IDs. We have mixing groups that have a list of people and their actual group ID, not a list, their group ID. Then we have main, we have a list of mixing groups, and we have a master list of people. And then we have functions in the mixing groups that compute the chances of a person who's exposed becoming infected. And then we have functions that go through the other stuff that's required each day to make this actually simulate how this would spread. And then um, we have some counters to look at the data and then that's it so take your time to understand um, how the infection spreads I'm sure there is some logic that is maybe messed up or could be implemented better but I'm not too worried about that I'm more worried about the, um, the data structuring of this more than anything and being able to access um, all the data I'm sure there's things that could be tweaked I kind of wanted to make it to where you could add um, a hospital basically each time a person becomes symptomatic I wanted to remove them from their respected list that they're in and put them into the hospital uh, group but the more I thought about that I think it would literally just kill the entire hospital group because we would have so many people in it that with the exponent it'd be like a 1% chance of them not becoming infected so I didn't do that but um, I'm sure there's a way you could maybe set that up to work, making multiple hospitals or something along those lines. Um, but let's run it here. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the program running. We'll create a 5,000. We're just going to infect a very large mixing group, like an elementary school. So we're going to infect the second elementary school. As you can see, everyone in this group, seven, nine, five, between the ages, you have their IDs here. You see these random IDs? Um, and they're infected. So let's continue a day. And we can get rid of the display, but you can kind of see here, I can kind of show you guys. Okay, this guy, each seven, is in this group. Everyone's exposed. All right. So we'll keep an eye on this one. So right now, we have 4,750 negative, this many exposed, this many infected, no symptomatic, no dead. As you can see, it is spreading very, very quick. Exposed. All of these exposed. 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 It's spreading extremely quick. So, as you can see here, these guys are still exposed from the last um, last time we were here, one two two one two seven seven. I need to remember this so I can show you guys. One two seven seven. As you can see, these are the new numbers. Quite a bit different. 
one two seven seven one two seven seven so now you can see since it's been a day the exposed that didn't become infected became negative but it looks like one of these guys actually became infected so now these guys after some time are going to become symptomatic but we can see here we're on day three and no one has become symptomatic we have infected and we have exposed i think the first symptomatics are going to be from the i can't scroll because there's so many but the um very first uh people that we infected i believe um it would be like the elementary school we should see it, I think, here. Yeah, we see 82. So we have this many infected now, this many expo or this many negative, this many exposed, and you're gonna see these two kind of go hand in hand, and same with this one a bit. They all kind of trade off of each other because whenever there's a huge spike in infected, shortly after there becomes a massive spike in exposed, which makes sense because when a bunch of people become infected, they start spreading that elsewhere. Um, and then the exposed go up and then that creates a small cycle and eventually it dies out but we're gonna go ahead and keep running it but you can see here exposed negative infected infected exposed negative uh, I believe this guy should become exposed next and then this guy might go back to negative but he should probably end up going right back to exposed if there's still people in this group so let's see so this guy's exposed, this guy's infected, this guy just became symptomatic. You can see the numbers uh, down there. <clears throat> so, we got our program on here, this guy just died, like we got people starting to die. So, as you can see, we already have 2,000 dead, 1,000 negative, um, this many exposed, infected, symptomatic. And you can kind of see now, these numbers, I like looking at these, it gets kind of interesting at this point, like day 18. As you can see, there were 300 exposed, but now there's only 100, but there's 74 infected. They kind of go back and forth, you'll see they start to spike, and then infected are going to spike, and it's going to repeat, but it's going to be lower each time. It's going to eventually die out almost completely or completely. But that's low enough to the point I think, okay, this is negligible. These guys will die. These guys will die. Maybe a few more will be added on, but it looks like we have about... 3,000. I'd assume it'll probably go up by 50 by the time these finish. But about 2,850 roughly out of a 5,000 population died when we targeted a big elementary school with like 80 members roughly. So that and it's pretty accurate with how it spreads. I'd probably give a good bit of marginal error or like a very large actually bit of marginal error just because the people just stay in their mixing groups when they start to become symptomatic, whereas in real life they would be very quarantined. And we could have done the hospital thing, but then I would have just ended up killing basically, you know, the entire hospital. What I might do is make a an empty mixing group in the future where we just put symptomatic people into where they can't spread it anymore. Or, you know, maybe flip a coin 50-50 and if it lands on it, we put them in there. Um, I think that'd actually be probably a pretty good idea. But that's how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And it's pretty cool. Um, there is definitely some stuff that can be tweaked to make it better, but I think it's a cool um, piece of code. It This is not my idea at all of a, of a piece of code. I'm actually working on this in school. Um, uh, but I do think it's very neat and I'm actually very happy with how it, how it looks turned out.
so and i like uploading stuff on this youtube channel just kind of for myself because i don't really think anyone watches it but if i ever am confused like or can't remember a piece of code i've worked on in the past or maybe i want to show an employee or something then i can pull this up and and take a look at it and uh so that's why i made this video um but i think this is a pretty cool piece of code and this is like the first piece of code i've wrote using list really and it's pretty neat there's a lot you can do with, with list so i think i'm gonna go ahead and, and probably tidy this up um and then put it on my github um so i have access to it and whatever and uh yeah that's it so i'm gonna go ahead and end it um if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment or to reach out to me um, i'm not really expecting anyone to watch this this is more for myself than anything but if someone does watch this and learn something you know then i think it's pretty cool so yeah that's all uh have a good day or night or evening i don't know what time it is for anyone watching but uh, yeah, that's it. God bless. Peace out, guys.